Still a chance for the Western Pacific system on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. Now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for April 19th. Still unclassified right now, which means that we're not concerned about any systems at this moment in time, and indeed there are no storms active around the world today. However, there is one area of interest that continues to catch our eye in the Western Pacific, and like we just said, chances aren't over for it yet by a long shot, in fact they're increasing. 43 days until Atlantic hurricane season and things are looking pretty quiet there, still that enormous extratropical low up there, passing through the Great Lakes and now into southern Canada there, uh, into Ontario, uh, but out at sea there's very little going on in the Atlantic. Here we have this 40% system then from Invest 92W and it's been remarkable how long it's been lingering in this area near the eastern Micronesian islands and that those chances are going up with the rotation increasing on that system and it's looking a lot better with more convection around it as well. That area of interest that was in the South Pacific has now been uh, scrubbed from our charts. It is still visible on satellite imagery, just a bit of convection there southeast of New Caledonia. In the Indian Ocean, nothing of any note here right now. You can see a few areas of cloudiness in the deeper tropics there, which look interesting at face value, but there's certainly no indications at this moment uh, that we're expecting any uh, tropical cyclone development over there in that whole region. Same too, of course, elsewhere around the world, Atlantic and Eastern Pacific. Satellite imagery, the last 24 hour trend looks like this and you can see it's been generally a quiet and well behaved weather pattern across the world there. A few red spots in uh, the tropical regions of Africa, the rainforest there, they expect a lot of rainfall in this period. Uh, I'm looking now to the Pacific Ocean and you can quite clearly see that area of interest in the Western Pacific and at very low latitude as well only around four degrees north at the moment which puts it south of the island of Pompeii but let's just zoom in here whilst we've got the chance to the other system that was located near New Caledonia you can clearly still see it with that banding or sort of a band or at least a swirl there rotation that's still um, moving around there and a lot of convection to the well to the south displaced and really stretching out that system and that will continue as it heads towards New Zealand possibly with storm force winds. Uh, now we had a little issue getting the uh, storms to animate on this particular section but you can see 92W there to be honest it was just me making a gaff and choosing the actual still image instead of the animation but there we go uh, looking very good on the infrared imagery there lots of convection blowing up and it is in a rotating pattern we did I did uh, select the rotate the uh, animated part in the end and there it is some you know it's not crazy rotation but we are seeing signs of it there an improving pattern on that system as it gets itself together sea surface temperatures are getting warmer still in the eastern pacific and a few real hot spots there right now above 30 degrees celsius the rest of the ocean still got some work to do the atlantic really expanding in the last week or so there into the uh, gulf stream off the coast of florida well into the higher 20s now uh, looking towards the indian ocean bay of bengal getting its act in together as well uh, above 28 degrees in the whole sub basin there up to 30 and even 32 near sri lanka in the southwest indian ocean temperatures still holding on a little bit longer especially around mauritius la reunion 28 degrees celsius still there but it looks like those temperatures are really starting to drop now in the mozambique channel Moving towards the Australian region, Ilsa has caused possibly irreparable de damage to the season off the coast of Western Australia. Much cooler temperatures there now. Gulf of Carpentaria still looking good. Northern Coral Sea also still a potential for late season activity. Towards the South Pacific, uh, that area near New Caledonia is still over warm sea surface temperatures, but it really is over for that system now. North of Fiji still very warm temperatures there as well. Western Pacific looking good as look too, with also that system over 29 30 degrees celsius waters and it will start to cool off a little bit as it moves northwards 
Sea surface temperature anomalies, it is slightly above average in most of the areas that matter and in the far eastern Pacific in the equatorial region, the El Nino signs are definitely there with very warm sea surface temperature anomalies. Off the coast of Australia, Queensland, very warm temperatures there as well, putting up to around 3 degrees above average which once again could still be a chance for a late season system although it is getting increasingly unlikely. Oceanic heat content still looks good for the deep tropics of the South Pacific although opportunities are diminishing and into the Western Pacific uh, really getting warmer now in the Philippines Sea, that channel from Guam towards the central Visayas region and in the eastern Pacific, one or two hot spots growing there as well, which is even more than what we had at the peak of last season already and it's been like that for quite a while it has to be said. Computer models then, and I can tell you there's very little on the GFS tonight. First of all, obviously this Western Pacific system, there it is, moving northwards and then westwards in the end. It struggles though, it doesn't really get itself together, and you would argue uh, quite uh, seriously whether that actually gets a tropical cyclone status or not. Of course, satellite imagery is showing us it's looking quite a bit better than what the model gives it credit for at the moment, so we certainly can't be sure uh, about the storm's lack of formation. Uh, if it does, it's likely to be short-lived and fairly weak. Rainfall, though, could be an issue for some of these small islands in Micronesia and some of the atolls to the north of uh, Pompeii. Uh, only one or two islands are north of there, but that's where the system will be heading. It will cause extremely heavy rainfall, possibly in some of those areas, with high accumulations. On the island of Pompeii itself we're expecting 7 inches further rainfall that is over 150 millimeters with potential maximums of 18 inches which is nearly 500 millimeters. Uh, looks like that will be out at sea at the moment but of course that can change quickly. 6 inches as well near Chuk, 150 millimeters and getting towards 1 inch there now in Guam uh, not likely to be a significant issue from this system but you can quite clearly see where all of that rain distribution places uh, well to the north and northeast of Pompeii predominantly. Longer range and this is nothing serious at all it's just an Atlantic extra tropical low because there's nothing else to look at at all honestly really there's nothing to look at at all so this isn't going to become tropical or anything like that i just thought it was pretty cool to watch that big swirly thing really large extra tropical cyclone around the north atlantic Th these things are fairly common especially in the uh, transition pit the transition months spring and fall um, there it is moving around causing some strong winds up there as well near the coast of greenland and atlantic canada you can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our products including full season and individual storm animations on request at any time. You can also uh, fancy that, still waiting for Hone t-shirts, still available right now in large numbers. In the silly range, uh, something that's only marginally more interesting than that extra cycle in the North Atlantic is a big one there in the South Atlantic, but behind it, in the very long range, a system there that tries to get towards tropical cyclone status, but I think it's still quite a ways away from getting there, and it doesn't last very long, and then eventually gets pushed eastwards uh, by another large low to its southwest, and eventually moves towards the coast of Chile. Uh, very long way out, that's in the early days of May, but really surprising, and and I think it's the first time ever that we've had the uh, medium and long range with pretty much nothing to talk about. We could have skipped those if we wanted to tonight. We can take a look at our server and chat with many, many other tropical weather watchers and general weather people out there. Discord.gg slash force13. On this day in 2000, we had... Ilsa, but further east, it was Cyclone Rosita, a strong Category 4 with wind estimates of 145 miles per hour and a pressure of 930 millibars. That's a Category 5 on the Australian scale as well. Category 4 on the Sappho Simpson scale made landfall late that evening. We also had Cyclone Paul at sea, that peaked as a Category 4, it was on its way down at this point. We also had the remnants of Neil not far from Tonga, and Innocent, which was weakening uh, rapidly in the southwest Indian Ocean after peaking as a tropical storm. 
Well then, back to this year and in the Atlantic Ocean, we'll be starting off the season with Arlene. When is the question? And it's anyone's guess right now. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Adrian. And in the Central Pacific, it is still Hone. In the Western Pacific, next name is Sanvu, and in the North Indian Ocean, it will be Mocha. In the race to be storm number 16 of 2023 so far. We thought we had it last week, but that system in the Philippines didn't quite make it to get that name on the international list. Jasper's next up in the Australian region, Fabien in the Southwest Indian Ocean, and Lola in the South Pacific. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back. We'll be back again tomorrow night.